welcome everyone so today i'm going to start a series on blazor hosting models and i will start with the web assembly so there are two types of hosting for blazor app first one is the blazor web assembly which is in preview and second one is the blazor server supported in asp.net core 3.0 that is the first version that was released uh, last uh, i mean 23rd of september so we have already worked with blazor server template in our get started and the app building to do list so those who have gone through um, those tutorials they would know and those who haven't gone please look into the earlier two tutorials so we will be taking up blazor web assembly because that is the principal hosting model for blazor which is running the client side in the browser using web assembly now the in this uh, web assembly model the app its dependencies and the dotnet runtime are downloaded to the browser the app is executed directly on the browser with ui thread as per this diagram so you have got the browser like chrome opera or firefox and it runs a ui thread under which the blazor app is running so blazor web assembly apps function in a similar manner as front end javascript frameworks like angular or react and the difference being that we can get away with just writing the c sharp code which we are all of us are familiar with i guess and you don't need to write any javascript so web assembly is a compact bytecode format optimized for fast download and maximum execution speed so this bytecode is machine readable not by human though and web assembly is an open web standard and it is supported in the web browsers without any plugins okay so you don't need to install any plugins to work with this and i will take another lecture on open web standard so when the app loads the dotnet runtime is started and pointed at the app assembly that means when the app loads on the browser we are talking about the client side right web assembly so the app startup logic runs and the root components are rendered so when the dotnet runtime starts and the, it loads the app assembly now the app assembly has its startup logic like the startup file that we have seen in last few videos how the startup um, class is configured for configures for registering any service or any middleware pipeline and um, the blazor calculates blazor framework calculates the user interface updates based on the rendered output from the component now we have seen those who have gone through the last two lectures you have seen that how uh, the components are built they are reusable you can capsules of code you can say and uh, it the framework calculates the updates based on the rendered output from the components so components are rendering some output and it calculates the user interface updates and the dom updates are then applied i mean the uh, various elements of the html are changed based on the rendered output from the components now this is the model so on top is the um, browser let's say it's a chrome browser or even you can think internet edge or any other browser and on the blazor framework you have got the razor components dot net and web assembly which communicates to and fro with the dom to update the dom model so it apps run purely on client side and such apps can be deployed to static site hosting solutions like github pages and dot net isn't required at all on the server to get all the benefits of blazor and full stack dot net web development host your visit blazor web assembly app with asp dot net core